All right, hello and welcome to this weather update. I'm sorry I kind of got here kind of late to do another one of some stuff I'm dealing with. But anyway, um, here is the storm right here offshore, about uh, maybe 100 miles or so, 150 miles east of Delm Harbor. Here's the circulation. I'm looking at Inventu Sky. We'll go to the satellite in a minute. So here's the circulation. You could see some of these really warm temperatures too. Very warm and humid air in this storm. Obviously, due to those warm waters, we know that already. We're looking at the wind speed now, and you can see these sustained winds up near 65 miles an hour uh, around the center. Uh, and like I said, very it's got an eye-like center. Almost looks like a double barrel here. Um, not sure if that's that doesn't seem like it's matching the satellite. Like I said, this is just a, a model, basically, is what this is. So here you got winds gusting up to up oh, well over hurricane force, 90, 92 miles an hour. Uh, very high winds, and even along the shore, we're experiencing some wind gusts up near 30 uh, miles an hour, and uh, also on the east end. So there'll be some wind gusts along uh, the Jersey Shore, the east end of Long Island, and of course offshore. Uh, let's look at some of these wave heights right now, um, and you can see some really high waves. 23, estimated 22. Uh, I'm gonna actually try to see if we can check some buoys. Uh, there's gonna be some impacts along the along the south shore and the east end of Long Island. Probably due to these, uh, probably some minor beach erosion, some some coastal flooding possible. So now let's go to the satellite, and here is the storm on satellite. I'm going to zoom this in, make this a little bigger for you. Again, so you can see this uh, uh, a little larger. And uh, here you go. Here's the storm. Here's the eye of the storm. The good news is it's moving northeast. It's exiting stage right. It's not going to impact land too much, but again, uh, this is a very intense hybrid coastal storm hurricane. I, and I, like I said, it's got tropical characteristics. You can see the eye and the eye wall, the spiral feeder bands. Uh, definitely some tropical characteristics here, for sure. And actually, I want to make this loop a little longer so you can get to see it. Let's do 72. Let me load this. Take a couple of minutes, probably to load. Oops. Here, here it is. So here's the evolution of it. Yeah, here's a nice long satellite loop for you to look at. So, look at it. Look at it form. Eye wall. Eye. This is an eye. This is an eye. Um, that's that's just something right there. A, hur a hurricane in August. This is what we have. Some kind of unusual hybrid storm. The good news is you can see on the back edge. It's uh, there's some clearing. So that's some good news. Uh, let's look at the radar next. Uh, so here is the radar from our area. And you can see here we're getting rain across Long Island. Nothing too heavy. Uh, maybe some moderate rain over Suffolk. Uh, you can see there's some much heavier banding of rain offshore. And like I said, these are bands, uh, like very much like a hurricane or a tropical storm. You have these feeder bands. Uh, that are uh, present. So uh, we'll look at the weather ground here for a uh, wider view of the radar. Uh, and here is again that storm, the storm right here. Uh, it's late, so I'm trying to make sense. Uh, but here is the storm right here. Uh, and uh, see the eye wall. Just remember the right. There is ra plenty of precipitation on this light. It's just that that's that can't be detected on the radar because the radar only goes out so far out to sea. Uh, but you can see some really intense convection over here along the edges. Uh, really intense stuff going on. So um, next we will look at the lightning. And you can see there's plenty of thunderstorms. There's actually been some lightning strikes a little closer. Uh, but again, plenty of thunderstorms around the center. Uh, lots and lots and lots of lightning strikes here. Uh, you can see there's a whole bunch that just occurred right there. Uh, and uh, these are occurring um, not too far offshore. Said maybe a hundred miles offshore. It's like I said, the storm it came close to us and it could have had a really devastating impact on us. Fortunately, the jet stream is working in our favor in taking this thing out to sea. So uh, now let's look at the uh, weather service and see what some uh, marine observations are right now because I'm kind of curious about that. Um, let's see uh, if we can get some of these buoys here. I'm going to take a look at some of these readings. So we have an east-northeast wind at 19 knots, gusting 23 south of Montauk. Wave height's not too bad, 4.9 feet. Uh, I'm sure it's worse much further south. Again, these don't really go that far south. 
uh, for us to see. So here's a north northeast wind at 21 gusting to 23 knots, uh, 4.6 wave height. <clears throat> um, let's work further south. Let's go further south. We need we need some readings from further south. So let's go and look at some of these marine readings and see if we can get some other observations here. From every site, unfortunately, is different. So trying to find the actual data. Let's see East Coast, but we have uh, this PDF. What, what is that? That's not going to help us. Yeah, this site doesn't have it. All right. Wait, well, there is a marine observations page. Let's see. Get some none none by or oh, shoot. So I guess Philadelphia Mount Holly doesn't have any. Uh, all right, we'll go to for the south because I know we got it from the other weather service. The uh, one in uh, Wakefield, Virginia, has one. So let's look at marine observations here. So here is a map. We'll be taking a look at some of these marine observations here. That these don't unfortunately there are um, there are hardly any buoys out this far and the ones that are are down unfortunately and they have been for quite some time which is unfortunate you think that they would make it a priority to have more buoys in the middle of the ocean where climate change is really impacting quite a bit all right so with this buoy here uh, wave height is up to 7.9 feet and the wind is let's see does it have a wind doesn't actually have the wind here, so actually I gotta hit view. Alright, we're gonna have to hit view view history. I wanted it should show the wind in here. Nope, that's not what we want. Alright, here we go. This is what we want. So um, they have a don't have wind on this data. This buoy does not have wind. Alright. Let's check out this one. Virginia Beach. All right, so they have a northwest wind, 25.3, gusting to 33 knots. Look at the wave heights, up to 15 feet. So that's what we're going to be having in our area as it moves through overnight later tonight. Some really high uh, waves here uh, that are occurring. Uh, again, we really, have really, it's a shame we really don't have any buoys in the middle of the storm where it's hitting um, because I'm sure it's going to be some pretty intense effects. Let's see about this one in Barnegat, New Jersey. Wave height, 5.9 feet. And again, actually, I should, it actually shows the water temperature. Water temperature 49.3, but this one is not out in the in the warm water. The warm water is over here. That's where the storm is. So you have cooler water right near the coast, but the minute you get offshore, you have this very warm water. So well, let's look at the models. I guess that'll be the last part of this weather update. Uh, I'm not really going to use the GFS for this. We'll just use the NAM and take a look and see where this thing tracks. We know it's tracking offshore. So pretty much, like I said, the east end of Long Island would see the most rainfall. Um, and, and you can see the center of this thing tracking offshore. All right, and then we have clear sky for tomorrow. Um, so let's take a look and see what uh, the rainfall is going to be. I think that will be what we're going to look at here. So, yeah, not too much, not too much more. I don't think any part of Long Island is going to get an inch. The heaviest stuff, like I said, stays offshore because the storm is staying offshore. So uh, we're fortunate for that. And we look at the clouds. We use this model for the clouds. You will see uh, that the clouds should break up. And we should have a fairly sunny day tomorrow. But we will have uh, windy conditions. If we go and we look at the wind speeds, uh, look at the wind speed here, uh, you will see that's going to be a little breezy. And again, look at, look at the intense winds around the center of this thing. Um, like I said, it's, it's a hybrid type of system. It, it really has a, a large amount of tropical characteristics. The good news is the worst of the winds do not hit us, but we, it will be breezy tomorrow. Uh, and uh, we have, it looks like we're going to have uh, a uh, westerly wind flow. Um, we'll go look at the GFS here. Look at that as well. There's the GFS. Uh, you'll see we'll have like a west, a very strong westerly wind flow, and then it goes to southwest. So uh, let's lastly look at the temperatures for tomorrow. I know it's kind of cold and raw tonight with that onshore flow, 
uh, but uh, we will see temperatures warm back up into uh, up to the 60s. So there won't be much of a sea breeze west wind. Uh, it'll be above normal tomorrow about by about 5 degrees. Uh, and then it drops off on Thursday a little bit more. But you can see the warmth that's waiting for us. But uh, I'm not going to talk about that right now. We'll talk about the uh, longer range forecast in another video. Anyway, I just wanted to update you on this storm here. Uh, just an incredible storm. Uh, and uh, let's see if it can show us the radar here. Yeah, you can show us the radar again. You can sort of see just the circulation here. And it just very unusual we're we're seeing things we've never thought we could ever imagine and uh, this is just the beginning uh, as we get into this really uh, dangerous period of climate change anyway that's going to wrap up this video take care and have a good night